Hi, I'm John Moolis, and welcome to another one of my videos devoted to discussing the bullying and harassment and victimisation I received whilst I was an employee of the Department of Defence in Canberra in 1990-91. Now, I've referred to the probation period that I was under. In the Australian Public Service back then, I don't know whether it's still the case, but back then you were put on six-month probation. And after six months, you were automatically, conf well, you weren't automatically confirmed, but in 99% of cases, the person was confirmed. It was a formality. You know, you had to really play up. There had to be really compelling reasons for them not to confirm your appointment. And if there's any doubt, they extend it to 12 months. And then after 12 months, they either appoint you or annul your, your appointment. That is sacking. No grounds of appeal. It's completely non-appellable. You're just out of there as if you, you know. And... I found out when I was at the Department of Defence, they must have brought this in because I'd been in the public service previously. That I don't think they had this back then, but there was a provision that they could actually extend it for a further three or six months, which meant that you could be on probation in the public service for up to, for up to 18 months. Now, that was crazy, and, and I've worked in private enterprise since then, and they have probation periods in private enterprise and they're usually only about four or six weeks because a, a boss in the private sector can look at you and size you up and tell whether you're, you're good or not and can make an assessment in that time. But in the public service, they've got to write their reports, they've got to put their reports on file, they've got to do all of this this crap, all this make work scheme for, for senior bureaucrats and it goes back to the to the early days of Australia the reason for this really long probation period in the public service it, it goes back to the convict era because they had to employ convicts in the public service and they felt they needed that long to assess them before they could be appointed now um you have to undergo, as I've mentioned before, you have to undergo a medical test and that determines whether you are fit to be appointed to the public service. Um, I failed my medical test largely because I, I put on the form that I suffered depression and I also put on the form that I had had contact with hepatitis B. There was a couple of other minor things but Depression was the thing which, which really did, was the killer. Um, here is the, um, uh, the form that, that after my first medical that they put, it says, um, examined medical officer's recommendations. It says um, there were three boxes. One is meets the medical fitness standard. The bottom box says is considered medically unfit for appointment or confirmation of appointment. And the middle box is the one they ticked for me, which says, is likely to be medical fit for confirmation of appointment within 12 months of the date of appointment, but should be re-examined in six months to enable a final decision to be made. Now, that sort of put me in limbo, but that was grounds enough for them not to confirm my appointment, because... Um, Six months came and I missed the appointment because by that stage all of these complaints and all of that other garbage at the Department of Defence was really in had intensified so much and it was just it was just a total blur. I mean I was just completely disoriented, completely burnt out by that stage. So I missed that appointment and they made another appointment for me and I went along there. And again, they didn't make a decision. They, they deferred it again, which meant that by the time the 12-month probation period came up, you know, I, was, I couldn't be appointed, so they couldn't confirm me. 
Now, that was grounds enough for me not to be appointed. You know, it should have gone out to everybody that he's not going to be appointed anyway. But that didn't stop them from starting up this massive campaign of harassment and bullying of me, of putting in these stupid, petty little complaints about me and, and trying to white ant my appointment. The fact is that I was a marked man, I wasn't going to be appointed, that they had made up their minds very early in the piece that, that I was going to have my appointment and oh, that I was going to be kicked out. So really, what was the point? And I said about this confirmation of appointment, once you're confirmed in the public service, that's it. You know, you're unsackable, you can't be sacked. Or, well, only under extreme circumstances you can be sacked. And that was the bait they were dangling in front of me all the time. They always led me to believe that I'd have my appointment confirmed. I knew they weren't going to appoint, con confirm my appointment. But they kept dangling this in front of me. It, it, it reminded me of, of uh, back in the 1980s and 90s, Channel 9 used to have a, a show called Wide World of Sports. It used to be on Saturday afternoon for four hours. It was hosted by Max Walker, Mike Gibson and Ken Sutcliffe. And once a year they used to have the Snow Show, which came from Perisher, Perisher Valley. And, and one, of, one of the features of the Snow Show was something called the Grab for Cash. I'll just put this aside for a second. And it involved people coming down a, a huge ski jump and then at the end when they go up in the air there'd be a bag of, of money hanging there in front of them and they'd have to try and grab that money before they came down and they came down in a, in a, a, dry, a little baby pool filled with water and they used to dress up and everything. It used to be a major feature of the show and of course uh, the, the cash was always a little bit out of their reach so that they couldn't grab it. And one year somebody did grab the, the, the money. So the following year when they had the snow show, they, pushed, they put the cash a little bit further out of reach. And each year after that, it kept getting a little bit further out of reach so nobody could grab it. And that's what happened with me. They kept on putting this probation just a little bit out of my reach so I couldn't get it. Now, I said here, I, I said all along that it was mainly discrimination why they w wouldn't confirm my appointment. And it got to such a ridiculous state that even people who had no authorisation to recommend my appointment or annulment, they were hopping onto the bandwagon as well. Here is a, a report. Um, I put in a complaint to the Equal Employment Opportunity Officer, the EEO Officer, that I was being discriminated against um, because of disability, mainly. And she's got here that, as a result of my investigation, it is recommended that Mr Moolers not be appointed as a permanent officer of this department. He should have his appointment annulled. It is also recommended that Mr Moolis seek professional guidance on dealing with his disability and improving his interpersonal skills to allow him to achieve a more satisfactory level of appointment in the future. You know, that's ridiculous. That, that's just crap. Anyway, the, the video is about to run out now. And, I, and it, like I said, this was just absurd what they were doing with me. It was disgraceful. But I'll come back with another video at some time in the future. And I hope that you've gained a bit of enlightenment out of this video. And I hope that, that you're following these videos and taking notes about just what can happen to somebody who is ill-equipped to cope with a campaign of bullying and harassment uh, that is staged against them. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and all the best. See ya.